Good Zangpala and welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program. My name is Cheku. First, the top stories. Manpower shortage delays the Funsoling Township Development Project. The Health Ministry to roll out the third dose for frontline workers and those with underlying health conditions. And ban on the issuance of bar licenses to be lifted once regulation to reduce alcohol consumption is ready. Now the details, the shortage of manpower is delaying the Fonsoling Township Development Project along the Amuchu. The project by far is the biggest urban development project in the country. It is estimated to cost 21 billion nyultrum and it is going to take 18 years to complete. The Punsoling Township Development Project would reclaim nearly 1,200 acres of land, equivalent to more than 700 football fields. The work started in November 2018. But the pandemic put a break on the progress since March last year. There are five zones. And the work is happening only in one of the zones for now. And the zone would be ready only by 2025. 7 billion item would be spent to complete the zone. Until March 2020, our progress was going quite well, I should say. Uh, our anticipated deadline was April 2021. Uh, however, since March 2020, our progress has drastically reduced to 1.7% per month uh, and against our anticipated progress of around 9% uh, per month. So uh, to, to complete the remaining works that we have, we require at least 300 uh, manpower by December. There are more than 100 skilled workers today. The Construction Development Corporation has put up a letter to the Southern COVID-19 Task Force to bring in more laborers. Currently, 50 foreign workers are in quarantine. Due to a lack of enough quarantine centers, only less number of workers is brought in at a time. Druk Holding and Investment and Asian Development Bank are funding the project. For Sonam Penjur in Pinsaling, Kinzang Hadden, BBS News. The poll day for the third local government elections will be held on 22nd December. The Election Commission of Bhutan announced the election dates on Wednesday. The Gyok Tokdes of 205 Gyoks, 16 Tromde Ngotaps and the Tromde Tokde for Sandrajonka will be elected on the day. As per the ECB's notification, the Damoi Zomdu or selection procedure for Gap, Mangmi and the Samrup Jongkha Thompen will start from 3rd November. The last day for filing of nominations by candidates is 22nd November. A candidate will get 26 days to campaign which will end two days before poll day. The election commission will start the operation of paper ballot facilitation booth and mobile voting booth from 11th of December. 22nd December will be the last day to receive the poster ballots. According to the ECB, a candidate should not exceed expenses beyond 75,000 yultam during the election campaign. Meanwhile, the Commission is recommending eligible voters residing outside the Demkhongs to register and vote through poster ballots due to the pandemic. Kelsang Chodin for BBS News. The sixth session of the third parliament will begin from 24th of next month. During the session, the National Assembly will deliberate on six bills, including the Forest and Nature Conservation Bill, Customs Duty Amendment Bill, Tax Amendment Bill and Goods and Services Tax Amendment Bill, among others. A press release from the National Assembly states that the Prime Minister may deliver the annual report on the state of the nation. The session is expected to take a month. The <laughs> The 
The Norgekan Cup in Samsi has filed a case against the Home Secretary, the Dzongkak Tokdu Chairperson and Planning Officer recently for alleged administrative lapses. The case is related to training for Tokpas held in Fensoling in May 2019 when the Secretary was the Dzongda there. According to the Norge Gangup, not informed about the postponement of the training, three Tokpas of Norge Gangyok had already reached Fintoling. The Tokpas through the GUP had requested a clarification from the Dzongkok administration in one of the Dzongkok's official WeChat groups. But the Dzongkok claimed to have informed the Tokpas about the rearrangement. Then the Dzongkok issued a warning letter to the GUP, Mangmi and four Tokpas for reporting false information as per the Local Government Act. Unhappy with the response, the GUP wrote to the Home Ministry. In his letter, the GUP also said the training duration was supposed to be for three days, but instead a four days training was held. On the other hand, the certificate reflected as five days. The Home Ministry had then written to the Dzongkok Tokdu chairperson to solve the case as per the LG Act and write back. However, after receiving no updates from the chairperson, the GUP also wrote to the chairperson in August, but there was no response. Meanwhile, the Norgegang Mangmi said he also did not receive any clarification on why he was given a warning letter. The GUP claims the former Dzongda then held a grudge against him. He also said the former Dzongda then made an issue out of the construction of Chugu Farm Road. The case is currently in the Tashichuling Dunga Court. Demotivated to work, the GUP, Mangmi and Tokpa of Jinpang Lingarnang Chuk gave in their resignation this year, which was however turned down. The Home Secretary, the Chairperson and the Planning Officer said they have no comments for now. For Pasang Dorji in Samti, Samtin Dolker, BBS News. Building up to the United Nations Climate Change Conference or COP26 scheduled to be held in Scotland from Sunday, the UNDP country offices final segment of the climate series started on Monday. The week-long event intends to create awareness of climate change and promote local solutions to fight the impacts of climate change. As part of the event, 14 young entrepreneurs venturing into green businesses participated in a Climate Smart exhibition. The exhibition, which will last until tomorrow afternoon, showcases eco-friendly businesses including virtual tourism and the use of drone technology for climate actions, among others. It is to encourage green entrepreneurship among Bhutanese youth. The simple device actually allows us to travel to, I think, different places without actually traveling. Travel, as we know, is one of the most uh, carbon-emitting activity because you are traveling in planes everywhere and that's uh, the main source of GHG emissions in the tourism industry. We have these uh, commercial drones which can monitor the uh, amount of carbon dioxide present in the air but then it doesn't have that capability to purify it at that moment only. So there are so many industrial areas in our country as well. Over the next few days, the event will also see some of the country's leading institutions share their commitments to raise climate actions. Concretely, what they will be doing to turn the National Determinants Contributions um, agenda into day-to-day -day action and set a clear target. And I believe it's very important now, it's time for us as a small mountainous nation to show that every one of us is making a pledge to make uh, concrete uh, commitment and actions at this point in time. As per a study by the NEC, the country's emission level could rise beyond the carbon absorption capacity of the forests by 2050 if businesses continue as usual. This, according to the study, will compromise Bhutan's carbon neutral status. Pupkem for Biz News. Upon the recommendation of the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group, or NITAG, the Health Ministry has decided to roll out the third dose of COVID vaccination. However, the dose will first be provided to the frontline workers and those with underlying health conditions. For the general population, the NITAG is considering a booster dose. The Health Ministry will conduct a screening of the eligible population before rolling out the third dose for the selected group of population. The NITAC said that the dose would be necessary as earlier doses of the COVID vaccines would not have developed an adequate level of antibody. 
to first if there's recommend i think basically it will be the uh, medical condition and frontline health, frontline workers then after that then uh, the other general population will also like to see he added that if their study suggests a declining efficacy of the previous shots the remaining population would be given a booster dose we have collected the sample based on the steady design the uh, regular interval of timing but uh, because uh, we couldn't test uh, because we are looking for some uh, funding support to buy the test kits once we get the test kits so we'll test uh, our samples dr sonawangchuk said the health ministry plans to roll out the third dose at the earliest however getting the vaccines could be challenging as manufacturers have received pre-orders till 2025 today A few countries have started giving booster dose to the first group of their population who received complete vaccination and those with underlying health conditions whose antibody level has been declining after 6 months of complete vaccination. For Karmawadi, Cheku for BBS News. Meanwhile, the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group is urging all eligible Bhutanese who are yet to receive the first dose of the COVID vaccines to get the jab before the end of this month. According to Dr. Sana Mongchuk, the majority of the people in this group would be pregnant women and breastfeeding mothers. He said there are enough evidence that the vaccines are safe for them. If you have taken first dose, of course, second dose will provide. Then, then after that, they will not provide the. first dose for all the eligible population that means from 12 and above because uh, we cannot continue uh, you know providing uh, the services you know uh, because there are other uh, essential uh, services that we have to provide so it's really uh, you know overstretching the health workers work and also is creating uh, is adding a lot of wastages because one or two people comes no and we have to open up one boil while so is adding a lot of wastages and you know vaccine just now is very difficult to get and also is expensive The oxygen plant at the Motanga Industrial Park in Samdajongkar is ready to export liquid oxygen to India. Liquid oxygen is crucial for the treatment of severe COVID-19 patients since the disease affects the lungs functioning. It helps them breathe. The supply is expected to help India in its fight against the coronavirus. <laughs> The oxygen plant was commissioned today. It will produce 40 tons of liquid oxygen daily which will be exported to the neighboring Indian state of Assam from next week. The oxygen supply will augment India's efforts to save lives and win the fight against COVID-19. According to a press release from the SD Cryogenic Gases Private Limited, The plant's commissioning would not have been possible amid the pandemic without the visionary leadership of His Majesty. While the pandemic disrupted the supply chains of almost all the industries, SD Cryogenics plant was prioritized with the safe import of required human resources and materials to start production. The construction of the plant began in 2019. It was supposed to be complete last year if not for the pandemic. SD Cryogenic Gases Private Limited is an FDI company between SD Cryogenics and Meghalaya Oxygen Private Limited and a Assam based Indian company. For Kilewan Shrin Samrup Jonkar, Sunampem for BBS News. Now if approved, the first more than 300,000 tourists visiting Bhutan after it reopens won't have to pay the sustainable development fee. As a post-COVID recovery measure, the Tourism Association of Bhutan is proposing the government for the SDF waiver. They have submitted a proposal to the Economic and Finance Committee of the National Assembly requesting deliberation during the upcoming session of the parliament. According to the Tourism Association, the SDF waiver will attract more tourists when it reopens for business. The association comprises the Association of Bhutanese Tour Operators, Hotel and Restaurant Association, Guides Association and the Handicraft Association. We had requested the government for the waiver of SDF till it comes to the last normal uh, uh, pre-COVID uh, in 2019, December, whatever the figure we had, or at least they can give to uh, for three years or whichever come, uh, comes uh, f- uh, first. With these incentives, there could be more tourists traveling. And with that, that's how economy activity will come back uh, in the country. And then how all the indirect taxes could be collected from there. So one of the ways to incentivize tourists to come to Bhutan is uh, by waving off the SDF phenomenon. Through the waiver of SDF, even if one tourist come, I think 
multiple sectors in the industry in in the country will benefit However, the National Assembly's committee said, although the matter merits attention, it is not included in the Parliament's agenda. But the committee will submit a report to the Parliament next month. If the proposal comes through, international tourists will be exempted from the daily STF of $65 per person per day and 1,200 ngutum for regional tourists. According to the Tourism Council, the country received some 300,000 tourists in 2019. Meanwhile, Bhutan received the lone tourist in August this year since the pandemic began. Bukkem, Fubibes News. The Japanese government has agreed to provide a grant of more than 520 million Miltrum to develop a digital topographic map of parts of the country that haven't been digitally mapped. An exchange of note was signed in New Delhi, India recently between the ambassadors of the two countries. The digital map will provide latest and reliable geospatial information which will benefit numerous sectors including agriculture, environment and disaster prevention. The ban on the issuance of bar licenses will be lifted once a regulation to reduce alcohol consumption is ready. The Economic Affairs Minister said this during his recent visit to Sarpong. During the meeting with the Economic Affairs Minister, the members of Sarpong business community said that the ban only led to an increase in illegal activities. They said fronting cases are common as people continue to operate bars with someone else's license. Why not there be a fresh license issuing? Uh, from the government side so that people will do on their own. They, they don't have to hire anybody else's license. Without a license in our name, we are not allowed to operate bars. If the government starts issuing bar licenses again, it would be very beneficial. The Economic Affairs Minister said his ministry has already proposed to lift the ban but has been told to wait. The Health Ministry advised us to keep the plan on hold for some time. A group of them are working on it. I am sure the outcome will be positive. According to the Prime Minister's office, the Health Ministry is preparing an alcohol reduction regulation that would be ready by next year. The office added the ban is likely to be lifted then. The government suspended issuing new bar licenses in 2010. For Karmo and Dean Sarpang, Tringdandup, BBS News. And this brings us to the end of this edition of Bhutan This Week. Until next time, I'm signing off only for now.